The following is not suitable for children under the age of 18. It contains coarse language, sexual references, as well as my own personal views and opinions. All characters of the show are fictional and are made for fun, not harm. You are listening to The Sky Jenny Show, the worst show ever. Hit the music! Hello my masters and welcome to the Sky Genie Show, the absolute worst show ever. We're on episode 43 of the Sky Genie Show and I'm going to have a bit of news regarding the show going forward and that tough love will no longer be a part of the Sky Genie Show. Now for about over a month I've been promoting her onto this show and we've only managed to get one show out of her. And the issue is with that, we, ha- we had WrestleMania week, we had Easter. So those weeks, we're never going to get anywhere. But the other weeks that we did have, she was either not prepared. And in the case of the last two weeks, I have heard nothing from her at all regarding anything. Now, I put it down to her being busy, as she does work. But to completely completely have no conversation whatsoever about what she, if she wants to do something for the show, which is kind of kind of pisses me off a little bit. I am trying not to trash her because she is still a friend, but I have a responsibility for this show, and when I promote something, I expect to give it. And if somebody is not going to contribute to the show. After they said they would, then I won't have them part of the show. It's that simple. And I am sorry to people who were looking forward to hearing her on the show, but what can you do? There's not much I can do. I haven't got a sign to a contract. I haven't been paying her any money. Nothing like that. And it is unfair of me to promote something, something and not give you what I promised. If it was a circumstance, great. But otherwise, I agreed to have her on the show for a few reasons to help with the show and get, have a little bit more variety to the show. But also, it was to help help her because she was working. She's working at a some radio station, and apparently, they wanted her to do work experience. She couldn't get up to the place to do it, so I. S- Offered her, why don't you do something, something on my show for work experience? Then possibly it could help to get you a radio career at some point. The result was episode forty-one, and a small introduction segment, and that was it. And what I did, I made the show once a week to let her get some, do some research get some news, get some whatever for the week. So she had a whole week to get everything done and prepared. I mean, I can't think that's probably more fair. And in that time, I was going to work on Patreon, which I'll come up to in a minute. Now, as of as of this moment, as of recording, I've heard nothing from her. I've got no response. It's been well over a week now. So... I just come to the conclusion that she just doesn't want to do the show, which is fine. Which is fine by me. I don't know why she couldn't just tell me, hey, I can't do the show anymore. That would have been fine, but, you know. Now, I'm at a point where I have to make a decision. And maybe it's going to affect my friendship because of it. Maybe it won't, but what am I to do here? 
the question I ask. And the thing is, me compared to her, I take this show pretty damn seriously. I mean, it's not easy doing a show trying to build something from nothing. But anyway, that's the scoop on that. So tough love is no more. May we do something in the future? Maybe, but that all depends on her, to be honest with you. So now we move on to Patreon. I was going to do a series, a radio-based series on Ginny Junior Adventures, but I absolutely hated it when I finished recording. It was to the point, why the fuck would I put it up if I don't like it? Why would I make people pay for it if they don't like it either? So Ginny Junior Adventures is not going ahead. As far as Patreon, I am planning to do other shows like roundtable type shows. Hopefully with other hosts from other podcasts. It won't be just about wrestling, it'll be other topics as well. It would be cool if we did fan interactive, if we do a poll and put a heap of topics like they do with what happened when. And we bring up, say, maybe a wrestler like Hulk Hogan or something like TNA. Or, and if it's non-wrestling, it could be a music genre or something going that month. So I want to do that each month. I have to get everybody on board with that. Get a few people and record a heap of episodes on it. And post them monthly on Patreon. I may do the first one on YouTube just as a exa- for example, but that's about it. As far as other shows, I really want to do more, but really stumped for ideas. So any ideas, please feel free to give them to me on my Facebook page group page or even on twitter if that helps then feel free and now moving on to something a bit light-hearted light-hearted i've been hearing about the next july pay-per-view for raw goodness gracious great balls of fire oh man the shit they come up with for pay-per-views and i swear vince mcmahon must be Thinking that you up and comer Jerry Lee Lewis going to be a smash hit with that song. And if he wasn't going for the song, it's kind of immature when you think about the title. Now, I wonder how many of these shows there will be. Because I'm looking at Solomon's page in on Twitter. It's pretty much a joke pretty much everywhere. So I could pretty much guarantee that if they don't change it between now and then... This will be the only time they'll have the great balls of fire for for a pay-per-view. And if they don't have Jerry Lee Lewis as the theme song, then there's no point. Don't go away. There'll be news and reviews after the break. (laughs) Want to join a fan discussion group? Talk about the show or anything else you'd like to talk about to other fans of the show? Check out on Facebook the Sky Jenny Show page. There, I give show updates, create polls and topics exclusive to Facebook. So check out the Sky Jenny Show page on Facebook today. For fans of the Sky Jenny Show, please also make sure to check out Wrestling Soup. They drop at 9.30 on Thursday. Join hosts Anthony Missionary Thomas and Joey Numbers as they lightheartedly Talk about the world that's happening in professional wrestling, as well as other current events. While over there, please make sure to check out the Saturday Morning Shitbox. Have your voice and question heard, as Mish and Joey answer questions on their thoughts of professional wrestling or anything else going around in the world. That show drops on Saturday morning-ish. The weeks it doesn't air is because they're doing... Pay-per-view Sunday. Yes, whenever there's a WWE pay-per-view, Mish and Joey usually review it, sometimes with John Draper. They also have shows on Stitcher and iTunes. If you want to catch the boys live, check them out on Mixler. Are you looking for a good laugh? Then check out Get in the Corner. Get in the Corner. Da Corner. Da Corner. With hosts... Yuck Nasty and Dogger Baby. Every Wednesday night at 9 pm on Mixler. Check them out on Wednesdays at 9 pm on Mixler. 
for interesting discussion and debates on professional wrestling, check out Johnny Florida, Michael Corvin, and Old Man Jenkins on Wrestling's National Committee. They talk a wide range of topics on the world that is pro wrestling. Check them out on Wednesday at 9 p.m. on Mixlaw. If you're looking for links to shows and social media accounts, go to our website at skygenieshow.weebly.com. There you will find links to the show and links to social media pages. Also exclusive to the site, some news and reviews that did not make it to the show. So please check out skygenieshow.weebly.com today. And we are back in now for the wrestling news. NWA President Bruce Thorpe had a meeting recently with Spike TV in bringing the oldest pro wrestling to Spike TV. Spike TV has expressed that they have wanted to bring pro wrestling back to the channel, but nothing is on the table right now. Sean Waltman apparently no-showed a show in the UK. Concerns were raised when nobody could get a hold of him. Sean Waltman has said since then that he is fine but dealing with personal issues. And that is all for the wrestling news. After the break, the wrestling reviews. If you'd like to send me a tweet, then on Twitter it's SDD916. Again, on Twitter it's SDD916. For fans of the show, please also check out the Don Tony and Kevin Castle show. Don Tony and Kevin Castle show is a hard hitting with brutal honesty type show as they give their views on the world of professional wrestling and WWE. They're also on Stitcher and iTunes if you want to catch them live, listen to them on Mixler. For my masters who are wondering if there will be Sky Genie shows throughout the Christmas New Year period. So sorry. Not for the normal show, but check out the holiday edition of the Sky Genie Show. There you will find I review old wrestling shows from the past. I review them to today's standards. And to make it interesting, I won't even know what I'm reviewing until I do it. Of course I'll know before you, because I have to record the fucking thing, don't I? But it's filled with gags and more as well. So check out the holiday edition of the Sky Genie Show right here on my channel here on YouTube. If you're looking for a very professional show to listen to, listen to The Solar Monster Sounds Off. His show, Smokes This One Entirely, is a very informative show. Join Jason Solomon as he gives his thoughts on the current events of professional wrestling. Catch his show on Podbean, Stitcher or iTunes. Also check out Jason and Solomon's YouTube page where he does extras for pay-per-view shows or interviews with wrestlers in the business. Jason has interviewed the likes of Diamond Dallas Page, Bob Hardcore Holly, the legendary Jim Ross, and even Booker T. Definitely a show worth checking out. The Sky Jenny Show is now on Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com dot com slash sky genie show there you'll find exclusive content not shown on youtube hosted by the sky genie and tough love your donations through patreon to the show goes to improve the overall quality of the show check us out at patreon dot com slash sky genie show today And now for the Raw Review. It sucked. And that was the Raw Review. And now for the Smackdown Review. Smackdown sucked balls. And that is the Smackdown Review. And it's now time for the WWE Payback 2017 review. 
Now, I did not watch the pre-show, so I will not be covering that on this review. But the pay-per-view opened up with the United States Championship. It was Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho. If Chris Jericho wins, then he would be joining SmackDown Live. In a really great opening match, your winner and new United States Champion, Chris Jericho. Now, I know people are surprised of the win, but... Let's face it, he's probably going to lose it on SmackDown in two nights. We then had the Cruiserweight Championship. It was Neville defending his championship against Austin Aries. Your winner by DQ was Austin Aries. It was a good match, but I see they're doing what me and Yuck Nasty were saying on the WrestleMania pre-show is that they're making Austin Aries chase the championship, and... I think Austin Aries will end up winning it on 205 Live. So I have to question, has 205 reached a milestone, like a 50th episode or 100th episode just at this point? Because that's where I'm thinking that might be heading. Then they could also just be holding off till the next pay-per-view. And I think TJ Perkins will be involved. We then had the Raw Tag Team Championship. It was the Hardy Boys versus Cesaro and Sheamus. In a really awesome match, your winners and still champions, the Hardy Boys. After the match, they embrace, but Cesaro and Sheamus turn heel on the Hardy Boys. And I think Cesaro is really good as a heel, so is Sheamus, and this is pretty interesting going forward. I had one idea, because people keep thinking that the broken gimmick is coming in, because... There's been all these rumours that that WWE has won the case against TNA, which just hasn't been true. And what if the Hardy Boys turned heel, and then you can explain the brokenness of that? Like, the Cesaro and Sheamus could have won here, and the Hardy Boys then turn heel and get broken. But then, anyway, that's my stupid logic. So the Hardy Boys win. Braun Strowman cuts a backstage promo. Then we had the Raw Women's Championship. It was Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. In a really good match, your winner and new champion, Alexa Bliss. Now, people are saying Bailey should have won because her home it's a hometown, but then I I've been watching WWE for years at this point, and if people don't know the rule of WWE Booking 101, the hometown person loses because they want to get more heat on the heel. It's a stupid logic, but hey, that's WWE logic. We then come to the House of Horrors match. I broke this down into part one and part two, as part one was in a house and part two was in the ring, so I'll do part one first. What I found of this was pretty, it was different. I don't know whether I liked it or I hated it, but then it's like it's like Final Deletion, but not in the sense that I did, at first when I watched it, I'm thinking, what the hell am I watching? And then when I watched it again, and a few times after that, I'm thinking, okay, I see where I could like it. Sometimes it's good to have a little bit of fancy in some of the, some of the wrestling things, but then I'm also a fan of pretty much straight lace. It should be competition based, which is why I watch New Japan. But then I should stick to watching New Japan. This is WWE, not New Japan. But I found it weird when Bray Wyatt tipped the fridge over, and we see shots of it looking like it's landing on Randy Orton. But then you come to the final shot, and Randy Orton is nowhere to be seen. There's no legs underneath. There's no nothing. Another idea I thought of, because it's meant to be a fantasy thing, why not have it in a in a like a small video camera and have Eric Rowan film it? Instead of having Randy Orton come up to the house, have it be all about Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is in control, telling Eric Rowan, you are not to get involved, you are here to film, and that's it. Then you have the announcers say, earlier today, we've received this, 
and word is they are on their way, but then that would have negated the whole darkness thing, which was apparently for California time, it was 6 p.m. and still daylight, but then WWE logic. We then had Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe in a really crappy match, and I think it's something that those two could really do better, but then they were following the first part of the House of Horrors match. Your winner was Seth Rollins. So now we come to part two of the House of Horrors match. And it was really terrible. Your winner was Bray Wyatt when the Bollywood boys and Jinder Mahal interfered. The part one was okay, but then you got to part two. It was really terrible. We then come to the main event where it was Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman in what I thought was an awesome main event. Braun Strowman looked like a dominant badass. Roman got a few things in, but Braun Strowman was the star of this match. And I have to say one thing, out of this whole match, out of this whole feud, I think this is probably Roman Reigns' best feud of his career, because this is the first time that Roman Reigns has been... In peril, the baby face in peril. He's supposed to be a baby face. He's supposed to have a challenge. Every time he faces somebody, he, you have that thought in the back of your head: he's going to win. So he's never the underdog. Here, he was the underdog. As I probably mentioned, Braun Strowman wins the match. After the match, Braun Strowman continues to beat down Roman Reigns to the point he leaves him bloodied. To get Roman to the range, which Reigns to the back, which goes to the post show. They try to put Roman Reigns into an ambulance. Braun Strowman runs through an ambulance door and rips it off and falls through some boxes. Goes to fight a little bit. Then Reigns slams the door in Braun Strowman's head and Braun Strowman runs off. I mean, Braun Strowman should have come back and taken Reigns out again, but WWE logic. He did get that heat back, pal. My bad Australian accented Mr. McMahon accent impression. Overall, I thought it was a good pay-per-view with questionable matches and outcomes. So I'm interested to see going forward what happens to Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman, which I think will be a stretcher match. The next pay-per-view, where Strowman should be winning that match too. Braun Strowman goes on to face Roman Reigns, uh, sorry, Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship, and at SummerSlam, that's where you have the feud between Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman just end. Where does Braun Strowman go from there? Who knows? I think it should be challenging for the title for the rest of the year, but then that's just me. But that is your WWE Payback 2017 review. And that'll be it for this episode of the Sky Jenny Show. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. The website is skygenieshow.weebly.com. There you'll find links to everything of the Sky Genie Show. Also on Facebook, the Sky Genie Show page. On Twitter, it's SDD916. Also, check us out on Patreon. It's www.patreon.com slash skygenieshow. Thank you all for listening, and I'll catch you later.